I'd like to, before we, uh, we introduce a bit of music here, uh, we'll have uh, an introduction, I think, a little talk from uh, our president of the Telicio Galilee Academy of Science. Can I introduce you to, or may I introduce you to, my colleague Jeremy Dunning Davis? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you all for attending here. Um, I know a number of you have traveled a tremendous distance, and uh, one or two people have traveled quite uh, a distance this morning in order to be here with us. So thank you all very much indeed. Now, just briefly, I want to mention something about the Telesio Galilei Academy itself. Um, it started in 2007. It was the brainchild of um, Francesco Fucilla, who is here with us this morning, over on my left. Um, we all owe him, I think, a great debt for setting up this academy. The crucial thing about it is, what, is its, what are its aims? Well, I'd like to just focus on what its main aim is. And its main aim from the very beginning has been to promote openness in science. Now, this sounds a very obvious thing to say. Um, most people... Uh, uninitiated think that automatically assume there is complete openness in science. Um, those of us that are on the inside know that this is not quite um, the, the case. And so this was the main aim of, of the association, to promote openness, but in all branches of science. Um, it was hoped that we would help with the dissemination of views um, of all kinds throughout all um, to all of the scientific community and to catalyze research into the foundations initially of subjects like chemistry, physics, biology but eventually we were hoping to move on to literally all areas of science um, and to promote new ideas as well now this is ob often a very tricky thing to do because if somebody um, does some work which is outside the mainstream how do you evaluate it? It's, it's very easy to think about this and say, oh, well, we should look at everything, but there, there is potentially some work that, that is going on that people with experience can look at and realize is, some, is going to be non-productive in the long run. But then there's other work which is, again, outside the mainstream, which may produce something revolutionary in the not-too-distant future, maybe in the more distant future. We can think back to examples of this. We can think back to the Copernican revolution, which was mentioned earlier. And then coming to more modern times, we can think of the revolution in um, science that was provoked by Einstein's theories of relativity and quantum mechanics, for example. Now, I'll apologize to everybody present for picking on some examples which are from uh, theoretical physics. But I'm afraid that's my area of moderate expertise and so it, it's natural for me to draw on that. But I'm sure that, well, in fact, I know for certain that there are people in the room that could stand up here and now and give us examples in biology and chemistry and so on very, very easily. But it's very, well, it's very easy for us to look back and think of these big changes that have come about in the past. But if we're going to try and support people who are going to be responsible for such changes in the future, that is very much more difficult. And so what we have within the academy, what we're setting up, is a, a group of people with that expertise and experience that they can bring to bear on such suggestions that come for, forward for us to consider. Um, it is hoped in the, in the not-too-distant future that the academy itself will be able to fund some of these um, changes, these revolutionary ideas that are going to be investigated in the future. But that is something um, for the, we hope, not too distant future. We're aiming to provide a bridge between newly developed concepts and existing work in fields, and um, creating a synergy between them um, that can be beneficial to growth in all different areas, in, in all directions. And at the basis of this is that we want to be able to encourage innovative projects. Today, in this <coughs> ceremony, we're going to honor 10 of our world's leading scientists whose remarkable contributions 
in all honesty, can only be regarded as markers in the history of science. And speaking personally, may I just say, in conclusion, how delighted I am that those people are able to be with us here today. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Um, and the second person to address us uh, uh, gives me pleasure, great pleasure, when I introduce the chairman of the Academy, Walter Alves Rodriguez. He's right here. Dear our dears, ladies and gentlemen, our president, Professor Dunning Bates, gave us all a clear description of our academy and the raison d'etre of our earliest awardees, leaving me with only a few words to add. Uh, the Telezio Galilei Academy of Science has been growing steadily over the years. The board of directors have carefully shaped its objectives in order to see that alongside other illustrious academies, we too could contribute to in encouraging scientific developments that are now more than ever so very need on this terrible period of man history, where scientific and technology developments are a prerequisite in assuming humanity continuation. The board of the Telezio Galilei Academy of Science are doing their best in these not so easy days to fulfill the noble ideals we have set. We do our best from the depths of our hearts and mind in order for today and for all eternity we may rejoice to live in a boundless universe of infinite possibilities, a place where, as expressed in the words of William Blake, you can always see a word in a grain of sand and a heaven in a white flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in one hour. And thank you for your attention. It's uh, interesting and in some ways significant to find addresses or references to two English poets. Uh, Milton himself wrestled with Copernicanism in Paradise Lost and a great philosopher was William Blake. William Blake, two poets, 17th and 19th centuries uh, of England. Um, we'll now, uh, if we may, move to the uh, awards themselves. Before I do so, just a second or two, yes, the founding father sits over to my left, uh, Francesco Fucilla. I hope you, those who have not met him, most have, uh, will, will do so later. But can I um, make the first award to Diaro Guidis di Figurado for his great contribution to mathematics, and among these we might mention the characterization of Hilbert spaces, solutions of superlinear elliptic problems, criticalities of Hamiltonian elliptic systems and superlinear elliptic systems, and also the maximum principles for what is the non-cooperative systems of biology. Those would um, characterize his work. And Giaro, would you like to come and receive your award? Gentlemen, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to express my deepest gratitude to the directory of the Telesio Galilei Academy of Sciences, uh, Professor Jeremy Dunning Davis, President, 
Paris Clifford Ames Vice President, uh, Kirill Shukanov General Secretary, Valdir Alves Rodriguez Jr. Chairman, and Franco Celery uh, Deputy Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a great honor for me to receive that. It comes to me a poem of the famous English poet of the 18th century, John Donne. No man is an island. That's the title of the poem. It's a beautiful poem. So I feel that the honor has to be shared with me by several people that were more important for my career, more essential, as a matter of fact. Starting with my father, living in a small town in the northeast of Brazil, a region afflicted by periodic droughts, it was not easy for him to cover the expenses of my education in other cities, including Rio de Janeiro. That was the capital of Brazil at the time. But he never said no to my daring project. In the School of Engineering in Rio de Janeiro, I was lucky to have my teacher of rational mechanics, Professor Peixoto, Mauricio Matos Peixoto, probably one of the first Brazilian mathematicians to achieve international recognition for his work in dynamical systems. And his joint work with the, the French mathematician René Thom. Peixoto was a good advisor in my first years of my advanced studies in mathematics. Uh, in, 19, in the 1950s, were very important for the development of science in Brazil. The National Research Council was created at the time. The Brazilian Center for uh, Physics Research had been found a couple of years before uh, due to uh, physicists like Cesar Lattes, uh, Oliveira Castro, Leite Lopes, and other physicists, uh, important Brazilian physicists at that time. In 1952, the Institute of Pure and Applied Mathematics was founded. Since there was no school of mathematics in Brazil at the time, you see, mathematics uh, in Brazil essentially started in 1934 uh, with the creation of the University of Sao Paulo and the uh, coming of scientists from Italy at the time. But there was a gap until 1950s, the 50s, when the National Research Council started a program of sending uh, young Brazilian mathematicians, uh, young men, to study abroad. I was very lucky to get a, a fellowship from the National Research Council. And Peixoto was again very important for me because he chose to send me to New York University, uh, to the Institute of Mathematical Science. Today it's called the current Institute of Mathematical Science. And I, it was a privilege for me uh, to uh, have Louis Nirenberg as my advisor. And uh, to be at the current institute uh, in the 50s and 60s was actually a privilege because Currently had been able essentially to, trans to take to New York uh, the best uh, mathematicians that were in Göttingen uh, due to the uh, problems uh, uh, of the war. And Nuremberg was very important in my career. And um, uh, he introduced me to the important problems in the theory of partial differential equations, especially the elliptic equations. So you see, I have these uh, uh, people as very important in my career, but I am also very thankful to my wife, Maruja, who in, during more than 50 years 
has given me all the support and the stimulus for my work. It's a lot of patience of her to have me for 50 years. Okay, in conclusion, I would like to thank again the Telesio Galilei Academy of Science for this honor that, uh, uh, that so kindly has granted me. So thank you very much. <laughs>